So, in looking at how we're dealing with da'wah in terms of Muslims and inviting Muslims back to Islam, we have to understand that there are many, many people that are, have been so distanced from Islam that you cannot expect them. If you meet a woman now in America who grew up, for instance, in a house, she might be an Afghani or a Pakistani or an Egyptian woman or Palestinian, but she's grown up in a very secular house, but she knows she's Muslim. And if you treat her as if, why aren't you wearing a hijab? You know, why don't you cover your hair? Don't you know that's haram? There's a man that came to the Prophet of Allah, a Muslim, and gave him as a gift. This is in Sahih Muslim. Gave him as a gift, a bottle of wine. That was his present to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Didn't you know that Allah prohibited wine? He said, لا يا رسول الله. I didn't know that. And then he whispered to the man who came with him, his servant. And he said, what did you just tell him? He said, I told him to go sell it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, The one that prohibited its drinking also prohibited its selling. And he said, oh, in that case, go dump it out. Now the Prophet ﷺ didn't say to him, What's wrong with you? How dare you bring me a bottle of wine as a gift? I mean, you might invite a very secularized Muslim to your house and he comes with a bottle of wine as a gift. And there's Muslims that would say, A'udhu billah, you know, go to hell or something. And slam the door on them. That's not what the Prophet ﷺ did. That's not how he treated that person. Because he was looking at the level of the person's knowledge and consciousness. Now one of the things about the people of Tasawwuf traditionally in the Muslim world is that, that they were known for their tolerance. They're people that were less condemnatory, less judgmental, which is obviously why they were very successful in calling other people to Islam. Uh, I'll give you an example. Habib Omar bin Mahfoul, who's a Yemeni scholar and uh, has a madrasa in Tirim. An American was studying with him and he said, if you want to call people in America to Islam, then it's based upon a condition that whoever you talk to you see them as better than you. And he said, and the reason for that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رسولا. We do not punish people until we send them a messenger. And so those people who have not heard the message of Islam have an excuse with their Lord for whatever they're doing. Whereas any of your disobedience, you have no excuse. And so that is a different way of looking. Instead of looking at people with contempt, you actually look at them with compassion. Instead of seeing them as your enemies, you see them as your potential friends and brothers. And that's what the Quran says, Asa Allah an yaj'ala baynaka wa bayna al-ladheena adaytum minhum mawadda. Wallahu qadir, wallahu ghafur rahim. Perhaps God will put between those that you now feel animosity or enmity towards, put between you and them love. And Allah is all powerful. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said to the Prophet, Laysa rakamin al-amri shayt. You have nothing to do with this. If Allah wants to guide them or forgive them, that's his business. In other words, the people that were treating him the worst at that time. Now the worst aspect of arrogance, the very worst quality that is in arrogance, is that those who display arrogance are completely deprived of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran that He will asrifu an ayati. I will divert my signs. Asrifu ayati anil ladhina yatakabbaruna fil arb bi ghayr al haq. Those who are arrogant without any right to be arrogant. Wa in yaraw kulla ayatin la yu'minu biha. If they see every sign, they won't believe in it. If they see the clear path, if they see guidance, they won't take that path. And if they see the path that deviates from the truth, that takes people away, they will take it as a path. Why? That is because they denied our signs. They denied our signs out of arrogance. They denied our signs and they were heedless. Ghafla. And this is why Imam al-Junaid 
the great, uh, they call him Imam al Ta'ifatain, because he was a great faqih, but he was also a great spiritual master. Imam al Junaid said, before learning about God, you have to empty your heart of arrogance. In, in traditional, when you study traditional uh, science, they say, uh, The most important thing is learning aqidah, and then you learn fiqh. Uh, I learned, you know, awwal wajib min alam min kulli fam makan min nadhin an yarif Allah wa rasulu bi sifati bi ma'ali nasub al ayati. The first obligation is to learn Allah and His Messenger. This is what they teach. If you go any traditional uh, madrasa training, first thing you learn aqidah, because that's awwal wajib. Imam Junaid said the first thing that you should teach somebody is what the signs of arrogance are and teach them how to fight those signs in themselves. Because if they're not doing that actively, it's a waste of time to teach them anything else because even if they learn the information, they won't have the knowledge. They won't have the knowledge. Arrogance is a disease. The Prophet ﷺ said once, said once, he said, لَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةِ مَنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهِ مِثْقَالُ ذَرَّةٍ مِنْ كِبْرٍ No one will enter paradise if they have an Adam's weight, an Adam's weight of arrogance in their heart. One Adam's weight will prevent you from entering into paradise. One Adam's weight. They forget that the Sahaba were all converts. The Sahaba were all converts. They converted to Islam. They weren't born in Islam. They were born in Jahiliyyah. But the Prophet ﷺ had the patience, the love, the care, the concern, and the forbearance to put up with all their arrogance, with all their Jahiliyyah for 23 years until the entire Arabian Peninsula was in a state of Islam. You have in the Messenger of Allah the best example. People won't put up for a person out here for five minutes talking about Islam. The Prophet put up with Abu Sufyan for almost 20 years fighting him, but still calling him to Islam until he finally became Muslim. And when he entered into Mecca, even though Abu Sufyan had fought him all those years, he honored Abu Sufyan. Man dakhla bayta Abu Sufyan kana amina. Whoever enters into the house of Abu Sufyan is in a state of security. SubhanAllah. Because the Prophet didn't have this arrogance in his heart. Hashahu.